I've been involved in martial arts for 45 years of my life, including to world championship level. But I got hit with body inclusion myositis. There is no cure for this. It's a degenerating disease. In my current accommodation, I'm here for the past three years. When I came here, I was on a walking stick. Not long after that, I was put onto crutches. And the past 15 months, I'm now sitting in a wheelchair. For a divorced man with two children, my HAP gives me 1,275 maximum. I have been unable to find any accommodation on HAP that would be suitable for a wheelchair user. This is my Mount Everest. I have been looking and contacting auctioneers who say, don't ring us, we don't have wheelchair properties on our books. DAF doesn't have wheelchair properties. And there just is a massive shortage. seen spending on housing assistance payments increase enormously. But at the same time, we've seen lots of challenges around, for instance, lack of supply of private rented accommodation. So we certainly need a strong regulation of the private rented sector, but I think we need to do it in a, in a much more strategic way. We've seen a huge number of regulations introduced in the last 10 years seven or eight new changes to regulations of landlords per year. But without any assessment of the impact they have, whether they contradict each other, etc., we need to look at and properly assess the impact of each proposed change to regulation before we implement it. So that's an example of an area where really the issue is about the implementation of the policy, not necessarily just the spending of money. My current living situation, the landlord has been very understanding and his attitude to me is, now that you're in a wheelchair, I hope the council are going to step up and find you a property that's suitable for a wheelchair user. And I'm still waiting. Um, five years I've been in and out of councils with my medical deterioration. I still haven't been allocated any housing. Sadly, I've heard of people that are waiting up to 10 years. Oh, a day in the life. It's awful. The landlord wants me out. I've got to go. And as a disabled person, I just want to be housed on one level, which a wheelchair user should be in. <laughs> I can't understand the ongoing fight when <laughs> it's obvious. The challenge we have currently isn't necessarily the scale of funding, it's actually spending the money and implementing the policy. Last year, social housing providers failed to meet their output target because building social housing from scratch is very slow. It takes about five years to build an apartment block in Dublin, starting from land acquisition through planning, tendering for builders and construction. So it, it's not quick. So actually spending the money is difficult. A lot of people on the social housing waiting list, but also there's a huge amount of unmet social housing need within the private rental sector. So there's huge pressure on the system, but a responder on track to have 4,300 homes in construction by the end of this year. 85% of what we do is this construction piece. So like what we want to do is our job. And I suppose one of the things that we are hoping for within budget 2024 is that the government ensures the continued viability for approved housing bodies to continue delivering social and cost rental homes. And that's through the CAV scheme, the Capital Advance Leasing Scheme and the CREL, the Cost Rental Equity Loan Scheme. So just ensuring that there's continued viability for approved housing bodies. I can entirely understand the, the pressure both government and opposition are under to come up with new ideas to fix the system. 
but in, in some ways fixing the system actually requires long-term certainty of funding, long-term certainty of regulation. So I think we need to move away from this kind of boom-bust system of social housing finance. In, in some ways the, the focus of the budget does imply that it's the be-all and end-all and obviously it is important, spending is important, but certainly in housing terms, long-term thinking, regulatory design, long-term funding is the key. There are 20,000 people in a wheelchair and 5,000 are struggling with accommodation. I'm one of them because I know the difficulty as a wheelchair user to, to get housing. It's absolutely mentally tormenting. It's like mental torture trying to find a place suitable for a wheelchair user.